I'm running a product uh, 21614 okay. is what I'm running. It's just a low salt pop-up starter. Um, that's actually new for this year. In the past, <laughs> all I'd been running through that tube was uh, water and sugar and a fulvic. That's it. There's nothing so else. So you're running, you're using the sugar and water mix, mm -hmm. or had been. Yeah, with the fulvic. Uh, with the My fulvic. son keeps saying, yeah. we need to be putting sugar and water in on in yeah. the pearl. Yeah, so I was just running water only. And a lot of people are like, you lost your mind. I'm like, there's a lot going on when you put sugar and fulvics together inside that's creating that biology where that, that seed is. I wanted to go to the starter so I... I just felt like the plant was still a little behind for where I wanted it to. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a, I heard, um, I can't remember where it was I heard this at. I don't know if it was on the internet or somebody speaking or what it was, but I thought it was really intelligent. They said a two by two or a two by two by two is not starter. That is a band. Okay. Starter is in furrow. Now we could sit here and argue the semantics of it and potato, potato, that's fine. But I thought it was pretty intelligent. Starter ought to be where the plant starts. Exactly. That's where it starts. So that's why I thought, you know, I'm going to go back to using an in starter. So um, the one thing I'm not crazy about on an exact merge planter, I don't like how when the seed is delivered, I, I love the delivery. Don't get me wrong. I love that about the planter. But I don't like putting starter on top of my seed. Right. The planters I've had in the past, or uh, my dad's, uh, the one he's got right now, so he's got a 1795 that, that uh, he uses, uh, split row, and it's got starter on it for corn with the inferro, but he's running totally tubulars. Okay. And his is just a, uh, it's, uh, it's not an exact emerge planter, and uh, it's putting the fertilizer and then the seed. Whereas an exact emerge is putting the seed and then the fertilizer. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to use something that is extremely, extremely low, 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 low salt. Exactly. Low salt. I don't get worried about salt, worried about salt in a strip till band. We have proven that and beat that horse to death. I'm not worried about that. I've got I've got volume and weight on my side with that. But squirting it directly on that seed, that that does kind of pucker me up a little bit. So we started there. And then this is kind of when I came up with the concentric sphere idea. You know, I thought about the, the center of a molecule. Um, you know, it's just the nucleus, right? Mm -hmm. So I thought of a seed as being a nucleus. And how do we encompass that whole entire thing? Well, we were doing two by two by two already. But I thought, is there a way that I can use some other nutrients and can lower them down in a concentration per area? but up them total on a per acre basis. And that was when we came up with the two by two by two uh, with the conceal here. And then we came off and we white it at the conceal and then okay. brought another line back here. So these tubes here and these wheels right here are the exact same thing. It's the exact same mix. What percentage are you putting through the conceal versus dribbling? 10 and 10. I want five, 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 and five. Okay, so you're just splitting equal. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So then you're running orifices up there in your Y and then orifices here. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yep. So with some of the micros that I'm using, the rates, uh, they're scary high. I mean, scary high. Okay. And putting that much concentration in one spot kind of had me worried a little bit. Sure. So, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say with the rate of of uh of boron i'm using but you know you can use two quarts pretty safely in one spot well if you could use it in one spot why can't you use it in three other spots so you sure. know figure out the math from there but um, well you're really getting a nice spread on this correct and you've got the chains here and i know years ago when i first saw somebody had chains on the planter i thought is that really much <laughs> until i did put chains on the planter myself then all of a sudden i became a chain believer you know <laughs> It's simple, it's practical, it's a pain in the butt sometimes. I'm not real crazy about them, and then other times I absolutely love them. But one of the things that, that I love to do, um, it does not concern me. When I look at a forecast, if I see that 
you know, hey, I've, I've got five days. I'm going to be in the in the 70s, 80s, whatever, and there's no rain coming. I'll sock that corn in three, three and a quarter inches deep. Doesn't worry me a bit. Well, one of the things that I noticed that the chains did when I was running, you know, whether it's poly twisters or furrow cruisers or whatever, they poke and they knead, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I read an article where some research had been done where even though we couldn't see the light that might be getting down into that seed trench, it was present to the plant and it could cause it to kind of come out to follow that path. Well, them chains just eliminated that. It just took that and smoothed okay. that all out. So that's why I did it for a more even. As far as running it because of the starter here, I'm not real worried about that. Okay, yeah. that's just an extra. Yeah, I did it more for, for emergence on the corn was the biggest reason.